we work in our hacker space where we just bought a new, well, just like two years ago, we bought uh, an oscilloscope and uh, the box said Windows XP are better, so it was the box. Uh, so, yeah, we got this, yeah, it's really nice, it was a, uh, you know, it was, it was what we could buy in a budget, it's Chinese and uh, Actually, when you turn it on, there's a big logo with Chinese characters. We don't know what they mean. Probably the English-talking people suck. And uh, the nice thing is that it, it, I mean, opposed to like HP, Agilent, and stuff like that, they don't have this big uh, proprietary port. It has USB and serial. Well, serial is great, but the problem is that you cannot use that to transfer uh, screenshots, which is probably the only thing you want to use a uh, USB on a stuff like this, so that you can uh, make great screenshots into documentation, like reverse engineering some port. And turns out you can only do that on USB, but USB is complicated. And actually, they, they, su they supply multi-platform drivers. But the problem is that what they mean by multi-platform is that they have drivers for Windows XP and Windows 2000. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and then, the best thing is that on Windows, most people say that, yeah, USB drivers, yeah, I should install some software from a Chinese supplier <laughs> which runs in the ring zero. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's, that's the best idea. Uh, so we try to do something else. Uh, in this URL, you can find all the resources that I talk about. And the best thing is uh, there was a great talk at the 2010 Congress, which I actually attended. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, he talked about LibUSB and he was one of the developers. And it was a really great talk, it's worth watching. And LibUSB is great because it lets you talk to USB devices from the user space. So not only I don't have to have ring zero code running in my kernel, I don't even need root privileges, so if you set uh, your uh, system up correctly, you can have user-level code and it will just work perfectly. But first you need to speak the protocol, and uh, well, LibUSB is great, but you still cannot decode it. But you have Wireshark, which uh, raise your hand if you know that it can capture USB packets. Fuck it. <laughs> Maybe it's not my average, uh, average uh, people <laughs> talk, but yeah, it's really great. They even have a have a really, really great guide how to set up your system so that you can capture USB packets. And uh, you have these control packets where it says uh, short notices like turn this off, turn this off, do this, do that. And you have these bulk transfers. You can see the length that it has uh, much bigger payloads. So, actually what I did, I started a Windows virtual machine and I snooped the traffic on the host. And uh, I, the only thing I did was capture a screenshot. And, uh, uh, yeah, I could see that these are the big packages, these, ma these must contain a screenshot. So, I act what I actually did was saved all the binary contents, concatenated it, because you see there, this is only one creation but in multiple packets, and started trying to decode it. And uh, uh, what I did, I tried to replicate getting the same payload in Python. There is a great uh, PyUSB library, which lets you access uh, libUSB, and I point again to Stefan because we love Python because it's simple and you don't fuck up the memory. So what I did, I simply copied from the Wireshark, so you see what I sent, and I sent the same thing, I expected the same responses, I don't know what these mean, why I have to send this many bytes, I just sent it, I, I really don't care. It's a little bit like fuzzing, but I don't want to ruin the device. And here's what I got back, and uh, this is the upper left side of the screen, actually the corner, and if, if, if you look at the right, maybe, maybe you can even see that it, it has some, it, it yeah, has some resemblance. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, one of my biggest problems was that it used some kind of uh, mixed uh, NDNS, so it has, it had big NDN numbers, but half of them was little NDN, so it has a really weird sequence of lines, but then, then I realized that 
the great thing was that it actually sent the things in color. So uh, each pixel was four bits, so it gives you 16 colors, but if you put that, it's, well, it's black and white. So how does that work? It turns out that the original software took this screenshot. They, the whole series of this product had the same processor probably, with the same software, and they, well, although it only had a monochrome screen, it sent out color information. Actually, we didn't know how it looks like because it's Chinese, we couldn't search for it, so this color scheme is what I designed for it. And uh, the, the, the really mean thing is that the Windows software recognizes that, oh, you have the cheaper scope with the monochrome screen, and it converts it back to monochrome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, fuck you. So, actually, our own driver has become better than the original because now we can have color screenshot, which, for example, really great when you have two signals which might, for example, intersect each other, and if it's the same color, you cannot see it. So, here's how we did it. And uh, it's on GitHub, it's on our wiki page, and thanks for your attention.